It's been just over a month since I replaced my Tado smart thermostat with a Shelly relay controlled by Home Assistant. And in this video, I just want to give an update on how that's been performing. If you haven't watched the original video, um, I suggest you watch that now before we get stuck in. So let's start with the positives. First off, it's been rock solid in terms of reliability. I wasn't really worried because um, Home Assistant has been, you know, really stable and it's really, really reliable. But it's nice to see that in practice, uh, it's actually been as reliable as I hoped it would be. The weather has been cold enough for maybe the last three weeks or so for the heating to be required. And honestly, it hasn't put a foot wrong in that time. Secondly, the heating behavior itself has been really good. Uh, it hasn't overshot the specified temperature too much and it kicks in uh, quite early. Uh, I've, I've got quite a narrow range configured for when it turns on and when it turns off. And that's something that's quite configurable within the generic thermostat itself. It's not very clever in any way. It doesn't have any features like TPI, which is a time and proportional integral, which can kind of turn your heating on and off in little bursts as you get closer to the target temperature. I haven't got anything like that. I think it's um, helped by the fact that I'm using quite a low flow temperature. So that means that the heat transfer is, is, is reasonably slow in terms of warming up the rooms. So it kind of cuts off well in time and doesn't really have a chance to overshoot. I think that's called thermal inertia or something like that, um, but it hasn't really been a problem. So this is an example of the last week, the week's worth of testing with the the main heating in the house. So you, you can see the, the generic terms that tracks the three different, so it tracks the current temperature, whether the heating is on or off and the target temperature. So you'll see these jumps uh, in the mornings, kind of spaced around eight o'clock. And you'll see the jump, if we take this day, for example, the 24th, you can see the heating jumped from 18 to 19 and a half. That switches the heating on as the target temp, well, basically that's first thing in the morning, so we'll have turned it on. And you'll see the temperature rising and it reaches sort of 19.9 and then it turns off and it doesn't actually overshoot that. So it doesn't kind of go up to sort of 20 and a half or 21 because um, we've just put enough heat into the house and then that will start to drop and then it kind of levels around. So there'll be things like solar gain and other bits that will be affecting the average temperature in the house. And then as we sort of come into the evening, again, I, I think I bumped the temperature there a little bit. That's an example of when we might have been a little bit chilly so I bumped it by maybe half a degree and then that'll shoot on and again whilst it does sort of overshoot it it doesn't really overshoot it massively uh, before it switches off and then it will drop down and now for the not so good the main problem I had initially with the generic thermostat is it has no capability for scheduling built into it so for the first week or two I was basically getting up and I was having to turn the heating on. So I would just switch it from a sleep preset to the home preset and then the heating would turn on and warm the house up. I get up quite early, so that meant that the house was plenty warm by the time my wife and kids got up. But it did mean that I was getting out of bed into a, a, a say, a chilly house. So that wasn't really fair on me, maybe. Um, so what I wanted to do was look at how I could introduce some proper scheduling. I found a really good component, a scheduling component. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, it's an integration and it's a kind of PC UI. So that worked out really well. Uh, you can specify the times, you can turn them on and off. Um, and I've been using that to essentially turn the heating on uh, first thing in the morning at like f maybe 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m., and that means the house is up to temp. Uh, then I had an automation for turning it off, and originally I had that set, I was kind of setting that at 10 o'clock, but I remembered that one of the problems I had doing that, you know, when I was using the Tado or even the Nest before that, 
was that sometimes we don't go to bed at 10 o'clock. So we would end up where the heating would turn off and then maybe by 11, the room had cooled down enough that we started to get chilly. So what I did was instead of using uh, a schedule to turn it off, um, I moved everything over to my, my sort of good night button. So beside my bed, I've got a, a Zigbee button and whoever's the last adult to go to bed just pushes that once. And presently that would just turn off all the lights, but I've extended that now so that it will also switch the heating to the sleep mode. Sorry, the sleep preset, which is, and that's been, that's been great. So, um, in addition to that, I have also set an automation that will turn it off at midnight. So it will set it to sleep at midnight on the off chance that we forget. To, to push that button you know if all the lights are off already we might we, we sometimes forget so that will just mean that come midnight it'll switch it into the sleep preset which just drops the temperature back a few degrees the second issue was the lack of physical controls now initially when i set this up i really didn't think this would be a problem because i didn't really think we ever adjusted the tato uh, aside from you know if it was late at night and i had to you know, the heating had turned off, we'd have to nip out and knock it up a few degrees. But during normal kind of day-to-day, -day, we not something we really used. But a couple of times, uh, myself and my wife have found we just needed the house to be a, a little bit warmer. Maybe we've just come in from it's quite cold outside and we just wanted to give the house a little boost. And that just involved taking out my phone and then adjusting the settings on the, the thermostat that way. Now I'm planning to install like a tablet based control center uh, at some point this year in the kitchen. And obviously that will give me phys essentially physical control. So we'll be able to adjust the heating from that. But it was interesting that I did lack that kind of dial uh, or that ability to, to switch that without resorting to my, to my phone. So what about improvements? So there's two main improvements I'd like to make. The first one is around occupancy. So the Tado had a kind of home and away mode uh, and using your phone's location, it would switch your heating off. And it had this kind of mode where if you, if you sort of figured you were on your way home, it would turn the heating back on in time to warm the house up. Never really found that worked well, but it was better than rocking up in a freezing cold house if we'd forgotten to switch the heating on when we were coming home from holidays or from a weekend away. I kind of think that eventually the occupancy will be a mixture of sort of phone location, possibly use the car's location, and then somehow leverage the uh, some occupancy sensors that I've, I've added into the, the ground floor. And it'll be some combination of those things that will work out if someone is at home. You can't, I found that using the phone is, is by itself, you know, for the two of us, my, myself and my wife, is fine. But if we ever have babysitters or we're not there, but the kids are at home and there's somebody in the house and we're not there, we've got to remember to turn the heating on or to leave it on. We ran into similar problems like this with our, with our alarm when we had it set to geofence so that when we left the house, it would arm the alarm. And it went off a couple of times on my father-in-law, who was still at home looking after the kids. So we've had to kind of turn that off uh, and I don't want to run into the same problem with the heating. So I will look at some way that we can try and leverage those different bits of information to be able to set it into an away preset. Or if we're going away maybe for a long time to put it into maybe an off state completely or a freeze protection state. Uh, so for example, if we're going away for two weeks, I don't want the heating keeping the house at 16 degrees for two weeks. Um, I'd rather it was just set to come on when it was five degrees, something like that. So I'll have a look at what I can do in terms of creating that kind of an automation. I'm also keen in exploring uh, a TPI based uh, controller as well. Now I did find um, one on so another home assistant integration, and that's like a smarter version of the generic thermostat. In fact, it might just be called smart thermostat. And that does offer the, the TPI control system. And it also has other 
fancy bits and bobs like weather compensation, uh, intelligence and, and things like that. So whilst the generic thermostat is working out really well, I would like to give this smart thermostat integration a go and just to see if that has better look at managing the, the target temperature. I'm also quite conscious of how the underfloor heating behavior needs to be quite different. Now I do have my thermostat control split, so I've got one for the kind of house for the radiators and I've got one then that just deals with the kitchen, which is the underfloor heating. And I've got those presets slightly different. So the setback at night uh, when, we're, when we're in the sleep mode isn't as high as it is for the radiators because it will take the underfloor heating a lot longer to wake up. Um, I may end up tweaking the schedules so that the underfloor heating comes on earlier in the morning than, than the rest of the house. But for the moment, it, it's fine. I mean, it's not that cold outside, so we're not really struggling with the heat in the morning. I think it'll be a different story when it's freezing outside or, you know, it's minus two. But I'll be able to tailor it uh, to my heart's content, really, which was the point of this change. So I'll be able to tailor that as I wish uh, once I've got colder weather to, to kind of experiment with. So overall, I'm really pleased with how this has worked out so far. Uh, taking out the Tado, I, I was kind of worried that it would turn it maybe be a bit of a disaster in terms of the the heating in the house and people getting too cold, but it's it's working out really, really well. Nobody's complained to me so far that it's been too cold, which is the main point uh, or the main the main uh, requirement with home heating. So I haven't had any complaints of that yet and hopefully I won't. So yeah, thrilled, thrilled with how it's going so far. I'll definitely do a few more videos on this as I experiment, especially around the occupancy stuff and looking at the, the TPI or the smart thermostat and any other findings I get over the, as we kind of come into the much colder weather. I'm really interested to see how the the overshooting and things behave. So how the actual smart, the gen, sorry, the generic terms that just handles this. If you've enjoyed this video, um, yeah, please do like and subscribe. And that's it. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.